In this video, we're going to be replacing the ball screw on the 1100MX behind me. We are going to be replacing the Z-axis ball screw specifically, but there are a couple differences between the Z-axis and the X and Y. At the end of the video, we'll point out what those differences are. Now, this is specifically an 1100MX, uh, but this video can be used as a reference for the M and PCNC 770 and 1100s if you have to replace a ball screw on that machine. So, the first thing we're going to do is install our box of material for our spindle head. And you notice I have it mounted uh, on the flange of the spindle cartridge here. We don't want to put it uh, directly on our spindle uh, to put any force through our bearings. So we either want to go on the flange of the cartridge or we can go on the back side of the uh, headstock casting. So before we can take our ball screw out, uh, what we're going to have to do is drop our Z-axis weight cover, which just has three screws that you unscrew from the bottom and we have to take off our bumper from the bottom of our ball screw. So this is just one socket and cap screw and then the screw washer and bumper all come off and we can set them aside for now. And the next thing we're going to do is remove our ATC access panel. That'll give us a little bit better access to the cover on the side of the ZX motor mount casting. Next, we're going to take off the side panel of our Z-axis motor mount casting here. There are four screws uh, in each corner. We aren't going to be able to completely remove this panel because we have our Z-axis cable chain attached. So we're just going to unbolt it and then pull it to the side a little bit. Once we have our side cover off, what we're going to do is loosen the bottom two screws on our coupler. In this case, our coupler screws are facing towards us from where we brace our head on our blocker material, but if necessary, you can use your pair of pliers around the outside of the coupler in order to turn it to move the screws facing you. And next, we're going to remove the four bolts holding the Z-brake to the casting and also remove the Z-motor cables. And then we'll pull the motor, brake, and coupler up and out as an assembly and we'll just set it to the side for right now. With our motor and brake assembly out of the way, you can see that if we look down onto our bearing nuts, that we have this star washer here. And one tab of this star washer is bent up into one of the notches in our top bearing nut. So we have to push this notch down in order to remove our bearing nut. Next, we're going to take our spanner wrenches and break our bearing lock nuts loose. We're going to hold the bottom nut in place with one wrench while we're loosening the top nut with the other one. And then once the top one is free, we'll take that one off and then take the bottom one off as well. Once we have our bearing nuts off, what we're going to do next is remove our Z-axis motor casting. So we have four bolts, two on our left side and then two on our right side. We're just going to take those off and then pull the casting straight up. It is pinned, so it might take a bit of persuasion to get it to come up. Uh, you might need a screwdriver to pry under or a hammer to give it some taps. So once we have our uh, motor mount casting out of the way, then we can see our ball screw shaft and the ball nut uh, down inside attached to our headstock. First thing we're going to do now is reach in and we can just pull out the bumper from the top of our ball screw. And then you can see we have six socket head cap screws attaching the ball nut to the headstock. And then we also have one screw here with a clip holding our oil line that runs to the ball nut. So first we're just going to loosen and not remove this screw holding the clip in. We're just gonna loosen that enough until we can uh, move the clip to the side to get our line out of the way. We'll undo the six screws holding the ball nut in and then we'll pull the entire ball screw out about six inches. We need to make sure though that we're not stretching the oil line too much because we will have to remove the oil fitting with the ball screw still in place and then we can pull the entire ball screw out and put our new one in. So now that we've got our new ball screw, we're gonna drop it into our Z axis and make sure that my oil fitting is facing towards the front of the machine and as I drop it in here, I'm gonna reconnect our oil fitting. So you can see we've got our ball screw sitting in place again, and we've got our oil line connected. So we're going to reconnect our six screws that hold our ball nut to our Z axis. 
So with our screws reinstalled, uh, just two more things left to do. We need to resecure our oil line uh, under our hose clip and reinstall our top bumper. Double check that the top of the ball screw is at the right height by comparing the bottom of the threads to the bearing top plate. If you have to screw it in or out, you can just do that by hand. And then once our ball screw is at the right height, we're going to lift up our motor casting and drop it on top of the ball screw shaft. So after we get our motor mount casting on top of our ball screw shaft, we're gonna retighten our four bolts on the motor mount casting and then reinstall our spacer that we pulled out from underneath our two bearing nuts. And then we're gonna reinstall our bearing nuts. So if you didn't notice when taking them out, there is a flat side and an angled side on each of the bearing nuts. So our bottom bearing nut, we're going to put the angled side down, and then we're going to have our star washer in between, and then our top bearing nut, we're going to have flat side down. So they're going to be opposed to each other with the angled sides out. So get our first one started in here. And it will get tight, um, but we do have to take up the slack that we have from where our ball screw is sitting. So it might take a good many turns in order to get it actually tight. So we've got both of our bearing nuts, our spacer and our star washer in, and we've got them tightened on pretty well, um, but we're not going to fold over our tab on our star washer to lock our, our rear bearing nut in place yet. We're also gonna leave our side cover off. We are going to have to check for backlash in the machine once we get everything bolted back up. But for right now, what we're going to do is reinstall our brake, uh, motor, and uh, coupler and tighten those back down, and then we'll be able to test the machine and see if we are tight enough or if we have to adjust those bearing nuts again. And don't forget, before we power on the machine, we got to reinstall our bumper and reattach our Z-axis weight cover. So we're going to check the backlash we have uh, with our angular contact bearings right now. So what I've done is powered up the machine and just slowly jogged up at first in Z just to make sure that the machine is moving correctly. And once I did see movement that I liked, then I re-referenced first our Z and then all our other axes. And I have set up a dial test indicator that we're going to measure our backlash with. Uh, this specifically is a dial test indicator with a resolution of half a thousandth. You don't specifically have to use a dial test indicator or an indicator with a resolution of half a thousandth. Uh, this is just one I happen to have. A one thousandth uh, indicator or a plunger style indicator is perfectly fine for uh, doing this measurement. And I have it set up against the flange of the spindle cartridge again. Uh, it can be the bottom of the spindle uh, if we want. It just needs to be a machine surface. We don't want to go off the rough casting to take our measurement. Since this is a dial test indicator, I will mention I have my needle uh, parallel with the uh, surface that we're measuring on this flange here. You don't want to have your needle, say, at a 45 degree angle, otherwise you're inducing cosine error into your reading. So what I'm going to do for a measurement is jog our z-axis down and preload our indicator. We're going to go past our zero mark here and I'm going to come back until we are on zero. So uh, our last movement here was in the positive direction and now I'm going to actually uh, step a certain amount of distance. It doesn't matter what this distance is, I'm just going to do five clicks, one, two, three, four, five and then you're coming back the same amount of distance. So one, two, three, four, five. So our not being back at zero is showing us how much backlash we have. In this case, uh, since this is a uh, half a thousandth resolution indicator and we have uh, two tick marks here, we're showing one thousandth of backlash. That's actually a fairly decent number. Uh, I could tighten those bearings a little bit more, but for 1,000th, I'm gonna leave the bearings where they are and actually uh, comp that out with backlash compensation. So since I like this number, what I'm going to have to still do is go back to our bearings and fold over that tab into our top bearing nut and then put our cover back on and then we'll be good to go. So I mentioned if you're replacing the X or Y ball screw, there are a couple of differences from the Z axis. 
The x-axis is largely the same, though of course you don't have a break uh, because you don't have to worry about the axis falling under gravity. So you're going to take off your left side cover here, and then there's a second cover underneath it, and that will give you access to your coupler between the servo or stepper and the ball screw. Your ball nut flange is on the left side, so you're going to move the table over to the left, and that'll allow you to get a ratchet with some extensions on it in order to undo the six screws holding the flange to the saddle. And uh, again, you have your oil line, but uh, once you have those undone, you can pull the entire ball screw out to the left side. If we're replacing the y-axis ball screw on a machine, that is where the major difference between the x and z axes are going to be. The y-axis motor is mounted on the back side of the machine, and our first step in replacing the ball screw isn't going to be different from our uh, x or z axes. So we're going to re remove our motor, our coupling, and then our lock nuts. However, the flange on the uh, y-axis ball screw is still facing towards the motor, so that's on the back side of the table. But the ribbing design of the base casting is uh, smaller in diameter than the ball nut flange, so we don't have clearance to pull the ball screw straight out of the back of the machine. What we have to do first is we're going to remove the uh, casting that the uh, y-axis ball nut is mounted to. So that's a separate casting that's attached to the bottom of the saddle. That casting just has four socketed cap screws. So we can remove those uh, screws holding the casting, remove the screws holding the ball nut, and then we would pull the ball screw forward uh, a couple inches uh, just to slide the uh, casting off of the ball screw. And then you have two options for removing the ball screw. Uh, there is a clearance hole in the front of the casting that is big enough to accommodate the ball nut flange. So you can pull the ball screw straight forward out of the machine. If you have an enclosure in the way uh, mounted though, that is going to be in the way. So the other option is to uh, pull the ball screw uh, back again, and then you're going to angle it down and then either uh, down into the front of the machine or down to the right of the machine, uh, either one can work, and then just uh, remove the ball screw at that angle. If you have a PCNC machine, however, uh, the standard stand uh, doesn't have an access trough on the bottom, so you would have to pull the machine off of the stand first. If you have a home-built stand or you just have the machine mounted on a bench, uh, obviously uh, that may be different for you.